Hey gang, welcome back to the Movie Reviewers 100 channel. Um, it's a collaboration channel where we have weekly themes, and our theme this week is childhood favorites. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if you've watched the other guys, you know that uh, Big Al started off the week, EJ and then Ian all posted great videos. Um, if I missed somebody in the time that I've made this film, because I'm making it a day early to get it on there, um, I apologize. So. Mine is the Tuesday slot, so here we go. What did I choose? Childhood Favorites Week, well I wonder. Um, if you know me from my channel, um, my own channel, uh, DVD Collector 1974, you know that I have a gigantic um, love and affection for Jim Henson. So with that, my childhood favorite movie would be the 1979 classic, The Muppet Movie. This is of course the DVD version of this. This is not on Blu-ray yet, at least not in the States. I'm not sure about the UK, but I don't think it is. Um, this is the 50th anniversary, 50 year, celebrating 50 years of being green. Uh, there's a couple of them on Blu-ray, but not that one. So, But anyway, this was uh, directed by James Frawley. The only thing he's really famous for is a lot of TV, a lot of TV. He did direct the made-for-TV movie about the Three Stooges' life. Uh, with Michael Chiklis in it, if you've ever seen that. It was actually pretty good. Um, this was written, um, screenplayed by Jim Henson and Jerry Jewell, the late, both both guys have been deceased for a little while. Jim Henson, of course, since 1989, and Jerry Jewell just a, a few years ago, maybe five, six years ago. There's not many of the great Muppeteers left. Um, David Goals is about the only, uh, I think he's about the only one I had, yeah. David Goles and um, Steve Whitmire. That's it. The rest of them, Jerry Nelson, Jerry Nielsen, Nielsen died this year. Frank, oh no, Frank Oz is still alive. Frank Oz is here. Uh, Richard Hunt died in before Henson. So anyway, uh, let's jump right into this movie. <coughs> Jim Henson and his Muppeteers were amazing geniuses for their time. This movie has everything. It has. Um, it's pretty much a perfect movie, except for it not being the the adult movie that you want to see. Um, it's a it's a Muppet movie. It's about Muppets, but it's pretty much the perfect movie. It has everything. It has the beginning, middle, end. It has plot. It has flow. It has uh, laughter. It has beautiful music. It has just the story progression is amazing, and. Uh, it's even got some special effects for back in the day. Now remember, this is 1979, so it was a big deal for a uh, a Muppet. Uh, Kermit plays the banjo, he rides a bike, he walks. Um, I think that's about it in this, except for the fact that they, you know, just the puppetry is way above and beyond. Now it even looks better than some CG stuff. But with all that being said, let's get into the main movie. I don't want to make this another 27 minute video. We'll try to keep you guys entertained here a little bit. Uh, this is basically the story of Kermit and his cast and crew, his main followers, and how they became the Muppets. <coughs> so let's go with that. The movie opens up in the movie theater. Um, all the Muppets have gathered to see um, the Muppet movie for the first time, like a premiere. Of course, there's all kind of hijinks and chairs blowing up and fish being thrown and stuff like that in this uh, theater. And we, we go down to the beginning of the theater, the uh, opening seats, and we see Kermit talking to his nephew, Robin, who are voiced by Jim Henson and Jerry Nelson. And uh, um, Robin just wants to know, Uncle Kermit, is this how we all started? And he's like, yeah, let's sit back and watch this. So from that point, we... We fade out, and when we come back in, we have this beautiful crane shot um, from the sky, probably a helicopter, I would assume, coming down, and the beautifully written, award-winning music, uh, the Rainbow Connection song, starts playing, and we follow this this camera to the swamp, where we see Kermit playing the banjo. Well, as he's playing the banjo, lo and behold, here comes... Uh, a guy in a boat who's lost, and it, it happens to be the uh, late great Dom DeLuise, who's playing an agent, and here's Kermit playing the, the banjo. 
Oh, sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> so he comes up to Kermit and says, hey, you know, you got some talent, blah, 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 go to Hollywood. You need to go get you a rich and famous contract. So what does Kermit do? He takes his advice. He goes home, he packs a bag, he goes to town. For whatever reason, he goes in this bar. Maybe he's looking for a ride, you know, whatever. But anyway, when he walks into the bar, of course, he meets, he sees Fozzie Bear, who is voiced by Frank Oz, who you might know from, I'll go on for a little bit of tangents here every now and then, but uh, Frank Oz, you may know from uh, how directing, actually, you know, uh, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, I, I believe, was one of his. Um, but the voice of Kermit, Piggy, or not Kermit, Fozzie, Piggy, and then we go to Sesame Street, we go to Grover, uh, and then Star Wars is some, this little green guy with big ears, you may know who I'm talking about, I believe his name's Yoda. So, uh, anyway, Kermit meets uh, Fozzie. Fozzie's, of course, ruining jokes left and right, totally irritating the audience. There's a big bar fight, Kermit and Fozzie sneak out. When they're outside, they, um, <coughs> They meet at a car. It apparently is Fozzie's car. When they get in the car, Kermit talks uh, Fozzie into becoming a group uh, partners and going to Hollywood f with him. Um, uh, oh, at this point, the villain shows up, uh, Doc Hopper, who's played by James Durning. Is that how you pronounce his name? Charles Durning, sorry. From... Uh, Oh crap, it was just in my head. Um, Old Brother, Where Art Thou, Dark Knight, Scarecrow, and I think more recently, though, um, Rescue Me with Dennis Lurie. He played the, Dennis Lurie's dad in the show Rescue Me. But anyway, uh, Doc Harper approaches Kermit and says, Hey, uh, I'd like you to be a spokesman for my fried, log, fried frog legs. And Kermit's like, Oh no, and they drive off. So, But anyway, they give chase. Him and his partner chase them. Well, Kermit and Fozzie get tired, so they pull into a parking lot. They fall asleep. When they wake up from the parking lot, they hear this really loud music. And <coughs> when they investigate, it's coming from this abandoned church. They go inside the church, and this is where we're introduced to uh, Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem, which is the Muppet Show band, if you ever watched the Muppet Show from the 70s. Um, of course, we've got Dr. Teeth, we have Floyd, Janice, Zoot, and Animal. Um, and then um, the stage manager, uh, Scooter, who was voiced by Richard Hunt. Um, they get caught up, they get the story caught up to them in a very, very cool way. They actually bring out a screenplay and say, well, why don't you just read this and you'll catch up to where we're at. So, you know, they, they do that. And it does a little song and dance thing and they get caught up in the story. Well, they decide to help the Muppets out, or Fozzie Kermit, really, to go outside and help them uh, camouflage their car, make it look different. So they do, and they, they drive off. And, of course, they're seen and given chase. Well, they hide and when the coast is clear they get out and at this point they um they run into gonzo literally they have a car wreck with gonzo um gonzo the great uh voiced by dave goals who still does gonzo he did him in the newest muppet movie by the way um i know i'm throwing you with my muppet knowledge but anyway they, so they find a car lot and uh, milton burrell shows up and sells them a car they get in their car and they drive off, and for whatever reason, they end up at a, uh, a fair a festival. And this is where we're introduced to Miss Piggy, voiced by Mr. Frank Oz. Um, Piggy, of course, has just won a beauty contest, and she sees Kermit in the crowd, falls head over heels in love with her, and decides to uh, you know, bully her way into this, um, this group, this trio. Plus a chicken. Gonzo has a chicken with him. And uh, so they go back to the car and they leave again. Now, in this scene, we're also given guest stars of uh, Richard Pryor and Bob Hope. I think that's it right then. Well, they're driving down the road and they all get tired and they say, let's pull over for the night, you know, and take a nap 
whatever. So at this point, Kermit and Piggy take their first date, um, and they go out to dinner, where their waiter is um, Steve Martin, who now understand that this is 1979, so this is really funny, Steve Martin, and he just about steals the show here, being this uh, really pissed off waiter that does not want. He's the kind of waiter that you know he knows he's not going to get a tip so he's really in a bad mood <laughs> so um, anyway piggy gets a phone call she goes to get the phone call and we are led to believe this is some time past uh, where Kermit gets up wandering he thinks he's been uh, just stood up walks out into the the bar and uh, hears music playing he goes to it and this is where we're introduced to Rolf the dog a little side note for Rolf the dog. Rolf is Jim Henson's actual first Muppet. It was created in the 60s for a, uh, a dog food commercial. Maybe even the early, late 50s. Um, I don't know if it was Alpo. I can't remember. I've read this a long time ago. <clears throat> but that was his. That was Jim's first Muppet. Professional Muppet that he was paid for and stuff. So during the filming of Muppet Treasure Island, which I might go by it's right there, but... Um, Jim Henson had just died not too long before that. So as homage to Jim Henson during the filming of the Muppet Treasure Island, uh, Rolf does not talk. He's totally silent the entire the entire movie. They couldn't really make Kermit silent because he's such a main character, but <clears throat> they of course made Rolf silent. So anyway, Rolf meets in and yeah, Rolf wants to go too, so they go to get in the car. Well there's a phone call for Kermit. He gets takes the phone call and it happens to be Piggy, she's being kidnapped by Doc Hopper and they need to go now to save her. Of course it's a trapping and, and uh, Kermit is taken hostage as well. They're both tied up and this enters the guest appearance by Mr. Mel Brooks who of course just like Steve Martin just about steals the show. He's just a few minutes of Mel Brooks but you know it's enough to acknowledge that he was there plays a mad scientist, kind of a Germanish scientist, and he's uh, going to build a machine that is going to turn Kermit's brain to mush so that he will do anything Doc, Ho Doc Hopper says to do and sell his frog legs. Well, once he's beat up a little bit, Piggy's had enough, and in her signature style, breaks free and karate chops the entire gang which the gang is actually made up of Henson and the other Muppeteers, just in different cuts. They they use them. And so she karate chops everybody with the big hi -ya, and of course Mel Brooks gets it. They escape. Well, they get in the car, and they're driving down the highway, their car breaks down. So they're stuck in the uh, in the desert. So They've made a fire, and they're sitting there, and Kermit decides to take a walk and gather his thoughts. He's feeling sorry for himself because he feels himself he feels as though he's the leader of this group and he's done them wrong by dragging him out here. There's a really touching scene in the desert where he finds himself and the other Kermit talks to him about, you know, these people believe in you, you got to be there for them, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, um, at this point, Kermit hears music. So he goes back to the camp and the Electric Mayhem's there again and they're all jamming out and rocking on and they all decide to go together to Hollywood. Well, they get in the bus and, um, and they're driving down the highway and they get pulled over by a police officer. The police officer happens to be the um, the assistant to Doc Hopper. And he warns them. He's like, listen, this has gone too far. He has hired a frog assassin to kill you. You need to hide. And Kermit's like, no, I've had enough. Let's, where can we meet? And they find this abandoned uh, ghost town and decide to meet there. Well, meanwhile, Kermit and them are walking around the ghost town, and, and we meet uh, Bunsen, Honeydew, and Beaker, and the mad scientist of the Muppets. I know he, especially Beaker's like, me, 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 me. So, uh, um, they meet those guys, and they show them some inventions they've got, and then they show up. The bad guys show up. And of course, this is still Henson and him as, as henchmen, which is pretty cool. If you look for him, you know what he looks like. It's pretty funny. But uh, 
Kermit straps on the guns and puts a cowboy hat out and goes out. And he's like, I had enough. We're going to do this. So he calls the assassin out. And at this point, Animal seems to get into stuff, and he eats a handful of Bunsen's uh, Instagrow tablets and becomes a hundred foot tall animal, like crashing stuff and breaking through a roof. It scares them off. So they get in the bus and they go to Hollywood. They get to Hollywood and they get to the, um, you know, they get to where they're going and they try to break in and the. the receptionist isn't having it and finally when they do get in um, they run up to the desk to the guy that's got his back turned to him it's like we're here to become rich and famous and he turns his chair around and a big reveal it's Orson Welles as the uh, guest appearance as the um, the agent and he's draw them up the standard um, rich and famous contract please from that point, we do a little song and dance, not quite a montage, but a song and dance thing where they're building the set to film their movie about their life. And it's another collaboration of all the Muppets singing the Rainbow Connection song. And it goes like that until the end. So that, in a nutshell, is the 1979 classic The Muppet Movie. Um... I can't say enough about this, so I'm just going to be quiet. I hope you've enjoyed this. Make sure you catch everybody else's videos. Um, this is my third video, so hopefully it's still going good. I'm really excited to be here. Um, and I appreciate everybody that's showed support to me joining the channel, as well as the other six guys that are on the channel with me. They've shown a lot of love and support um, in these past three weeks. So I'm going to leave you with that. Um, Remember, my name is James. You can catch me on DVD Collector 1974 as well as here next Tuesday with our next theme. So make sure you watch something good this week. Um, feel free to break out the Muppets. You don't have to be a kid to watch the kid movies. I promise. I just used my son as an excuse to watch them. I'd still watch them. But anyway, I'll see you later.